Good morning, FYI family. Good morning. Welcome to our broadcast. Welcome to each and every one of you. And some of y'all not wasting time at all. Edward Brooms is already here. Debbie Collins is already here. Paulette Barnes is already here. Rohan, but Sam Trump is here too. We got Paulette Barnes. Good to have you. Marcia and Debbie Collins on the live. Even Benjamin is here too. I see. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. See. FII family out. Great to have you all at this end, folks. How y'all are doing this morning? Do let us know how you folks are doing this morning. Good to have Ewart and uh, Sudhari Sukchan. Good to have you as well here, folks. Welcome to our broadcast. Where is the merengue? The merengue tea lady. Camille Cox, other region six. Camille, where, where are you this morning? Oh, yes, I see Camille now. Welcome, Camille Osman Hodge. And Guaz Griffith, Emerson Holder. Good morning, Emerson. Grateful for all the beautiful folks joining us this morning. You know, I met a guy yesterday and said, I didn't get any the notifications when you come on live. <laughs> Big shout out to him. Not getting any notifications when you come on live. I said, Really? You see, yeah, Facebook doing a certain thing. They say, Boy, don't tell us. Facebook is all over the place. But I was able to show him how to subscribe to our YouTube channel where he will get the valid and credible information. So ensure, folks, ensure wherever you, wherever you're joining us from, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, just search for credible sources. Search for credible sources and click on that subscribe button. It's as easy as that. And then when you finish subscribing, you click that same button again, and it'll ask you if you want all the notifications, some, you click on. Soon as we post something, you get it live and direct in your hands. Bing, bing, bing. Live and direct. So I'm sure, good folks, I know we got some bad ones in the mix, but I'm sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. All right, please and thank you. Ensure that, ensure that you do that. Subscribe fully to our YouTube channel, and that's what you're looking for. Ivan Ramasa, Camille Cox. I call it the folks who try to listen to fast books and fast book, uh, fast books too. <laughs> Camille, Ivan, Erwin, Don. Good to have all of you on the live this morning. Y'all know how we say it. You're on the line. Yeah. Great to have all of you here, folks. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Just leaving that there a second longer. I know some of you are advancing age. We got a little slower. Your hands not hands in as it used to. The eyes not eyes in. To ensure that you subscribe, folks, you smash that emoji button, you share the line. I see some bananas, I see all kinds of lovely smiley faces, I see a cup of coffee. Or right, Rindam, thank you for all the emojis. <laughs> thank you for all those emojis. We take them, we take them, we take them. All the emojis. Whichever page or profile. You're joining us from, and we're 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 now more um, aware than before that a lot of families, Rihanna Mingo, watch us together. A lot of families watch us together, and so why we might be seeing three thousand people watching us on a daily basis on any program, that might be nine thousand because if I got ten people in the family, nothing the wrong with smart television watching us on the tube and well, now you can get youtube on television you can get facebook on your television too the television is more smart than us thankfully i'm so grateful you know like when you get older pretty melissa loretta argyle yvonne and all the guys watching us like the things you can detect when you're younger like 
You gratefully surrender the things of you. Like how you use a heavy big back TV. I'm so grateful for technology. I know that's where we starting this morning. The Secretary General. Our, let, 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 let me ease up today. I was coming around with the Commonwealth Secretary General and some advice that she's given. I'm so happy for the technological advances. People are getting smarter like Irvin and Jack New and Acme Singh and... What's the other one? Nandlal and so on. <laughs> Not getting smarter. Thank God for technology. We can work smart instead of working harder. I know some of us big, but don't let me give up. Some of us advanced. Thanks to me. You're not old, you're advanced. Some of us are advanced. But don't let's give up, folks. Not just yet. Don't let us give up just yet, folks. <laughs> hold, hold your horses. Not just yet. So we advance. And I think that's that's the, the admonition, the encouragement as we start, that's coming from the Commonwealth Secretary General, who is advising, starting with some international affairs, advising folks that we adopt AI. Somebody would say, now, who's I? <laughs> who's that? I remember one of my first constitutional law classes. When I was doing my LLB, my PUNGS, my PUNGS and my Bachelor's of Law degree, the tutor, the lecturer asked, what is a constitution? We had some bright folks in the class. <laughs> We had some 200 watts, some 300 watts. Colleague of mine said the Constitution is a book. It was a good starting point. It was a good starting point. You might get a half badly technically. <laughs> technically right. The Constitution is a book. But despite how advanced, Camille, Despite how advanced, we got to keep cutting edge with the time, you know? Camille is about 35, and yet Camille gets up every morning and goes out to the gym. Right? I get it right. Camille, or I put you in a, put you in a high age and you really are. Camille is about 35. One of our hard working councils in Region 6. Gets up every morning, 4.30. Some of us now take in before I start. Camille turning in by the gym. So I was I was more than happy to see the CARICOM Secretary General. Patricia Scotland supporting the digital technology growth. We gotta do our part. Don't resign yourself. AI this thing sound like. Is that a new makeup? A new facial cleanser. Is that artificial intelligence might be contributing to all those things? All the above. Might be contributing to all the above. We gotta stick with the time, folks. We gotta stick with the time. And if te technology is, is growing, we gotta grow with it. We gotta grow with it. And the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland, the Honorable, says that they're working to accelerate growth with its citizens in all 56 member states, especially among the 1.5 billion young people who are part of the Commonwealth. That's us. We number there, Patricia. Patricia Graves and Goodman, we number there. 1.5 billion young people. Wenda, Renella, Samoa, Debbie. We number there. So give up. Some of y'all tell your kids. I don't have no smartphone. Really? <laughs> you said no so soon? In your quiet time, when we are here, you be curious. What's this thing? 
Sharada, I was asking about YouTube. I know some of y'all say, I ain't fancy all these apps and cash up on this app. Don't be left behind. You retire? So what? Refire? Find another vacation. Start reading up, doing your research about AI. I never mean, TikTok, my name for business on Facebook. You want to see what um, Melly Mel said? You want to see what um, Odette said? You want to see what Lola Dawn doing? Right? But do your own little research into artificial intelligence. Folks, it's going to transform this world. I was listening to an article yesterday when I was driving up to Burbies talking about how artificial intelligence is going to have the same impact that the steam engine had to the industrial revolution. Now it's all like a little bright there. You got to be curious. You got to be curious about the world we live in. You know when they stop learning? Huh? When they're flinging the, the, the dirt behind you and they put you up. Sashes, sashes, dust to dust. Huh? Now, Naomi says she feel that. I talk with people who are, um, good morning, Naomi, who on Facebook and TikTok. My little lad boy, TikTok. My little business. <laughs> no offense, man. <laughs> no offense, man. Don't no fancy remote than the television just yet, Naomi. Felt your phone. Just yet. But we got to pick up the pace. So I was happy to see this call by the UN Secretary General. I felt to give it to the young lady from Jamaica, Secretary General Shippen, and the other election this one. But Scott, let's go and match, go and match. Let's get up to speed. Don't sign out yet. Right? Y'all have went to Naomi Page and see how Naomi's roll out. And because you're 30, you give up. You say, I don't like it. No, 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 fight more back. Fight more. everything for move a crease, a wrinkle, a spot, a blemish. Pick up the face, folks. Pick up the face. So thank you, Baroness Scotland. We gotta adopt artificial intelligence. Don't let that way leave us. Now there's a spot, folks. Between Mexico and they're telling us Ecuador. Is that your Mexican or your Mexican? You can't have it always. So Mexico is requesting the UN to suspend Ecuador's membership. We got some problems around the world. Because Ecuador had a raid on the embassy belonging to Mexico. She said, until they have apologized, suspend them from the United Nations. All that Venezuela do us. I never hear you calling Venezuela to be suspended. I bring this to the coffee. Pretty Malicia? This one in March, I feel like putting up my foot. Roxton Aaron, flight back first. All the things that Venezuela do we. Instead of we ask for the suspension from the UN, mind you, Mexico, everybody had to read the embassy, you know, they're claiming half of Mexico. And then still we ask them to be suspended. No, no, we carry rum and give them big gold chain, gold band, and so on. And give them not so with Mexico. Mexico asserting its rights. See, Mexico has requested, folks, the suspension of Ecuador's membership from the U.S. until it apologizes for an armed raid on its Mexico embassy. I think the city is Quinto. And here, Mexico is accusing Ecuador of violating international law and a U.N. treaty on diplomatic relations. We know about all these things and move them against Venezuela. Marlon Thomas, Courtney, Gwen Anderson. How come we know about all of this? 
the suspension of these diplomatic ties between the two countries began on Friday last, as I said, when the Ecuadorian police entered the embassy and arrested the former vice president. I think it's Jorge, that's for the J. Process Nation, the single Rossi here, Jorge Glass. Who oh, suspension? <laughs> we ask people, we are really upside down country. Unita Mona, Marilyn Thomas, Troy Fraser, Alison George, Sharon Mercurius. Right? Sharon says, we have been really just friends and friends do friends do wrong. So they could claim how much ever they want to claim. Nobody bothered. We're just going down the road. So that, that's Ecuador, folks. That's Mexico. And these folks are serious, you know. Not like us. Not like us. Look at the following. Little regional news becoming now a thing. But Ecuador is sort of the regional too here. Latin American countries. Latin American countries. In this one here, to make it sing that 90 million gallons of water has been dropped to farmers as drought intensifies in Jamaica. So you see, we're dealing with a lot of climate change, but that's another thing I encourage our viewers. Pick up on your reading of climate change. You don't just say climate change and your glass over that. You say big word, big phrase. Huh? Instead of making your business hold it, I think they don't mind your business, you know. I would never tell you all. Don't mind your business. I would never tell you all that. Right? I thought about it different. Why you all all the apps hold it? I talk with the people who are the apps hold it. What's happening out there? Oh Lord. You touch me in some barbie spoke. They give you the whole rundown, five minutes. They would come with a hundred stories. Bah, 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 bah. Mary Mel, but that's the primus. This, that. The Mohammed, Irfan, Jack Leo, Sue, everybody. <laughs> so, like this drought, guys, have been, has been affecting the agriculture, the agriculture, sector there in Jamaica. What's interesting here, yesterday, as you know by now, my my buttons have become undone folks. How shall I go on? <laughs> but yesterday I was in Bath, Bath settlement, and the farmers were complaining about how the land is arid. Isn't that beautiful work? I learned the word arid many years ago. Loved it. The land has become so arid. Climate change, incompetence. I don't know. You take your pick for the government. You take your pick for the government. Jamaica's gone all differently. Nobody's not helping the farmers, whether in whether in um bad settlement or elsewhere. Jamaica says they've been trucking water. They've been trucking water. Right? Trucking water. The government has allocated $150 million to this. And they have a, a big number in terms of how much water they were able to deliver. 90 million gallons of water. I don't think the farmers are seeing a, a, a gallon. Jamaica's trucking. We always got a plan here. We talk about some of that. We planning and planning and planning. The good book says you might have done your devotion already to the morning and be prepared to angry. Ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. How a Sunday pass, friend? Ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of us. Once we say it's coming, <laughs> they take a they take a box, promise delivery. 
Coming soon. Promise delivered. Take that box. The Jamaicans have delivered 9 million gallons of water to farmers. As if the water coming to them, you got to try to... The rain and falling, the, you got to carry the water to them. But all farmers here are crying out. Look, guys, took up for instance. Everybody be talking on the ground. You know in places like Barbies, five and six, you find out. What's happening with guys who Everybody sings lies upon lies upon lies with guys who That show ain't going no place. Blame on the English producer. As a matter of fact, people are saying blame on my clothes in a couple months. Lies upon lies upon lies. The proof of the puddings in eating and the Jamaicans showing us they're taking waters to their farmers. Not something they say with wholeness. You know, I still looking for the underdogs there. Golding and team, Mark, Golding and team. And not really root, root for the underdogs. And finally, in reaches the news next door. Somebody. Geographically. <laughs> no, Trinidad is one of those places hard hit by crime. And the crime chief, well, crime chief, commissioner of police currently, young lady, she's come on some severe pressure. To show some results where crime is concerned and there's some argumentation happening currently the crime is stifling the influx of tourists that Trinidad is accustomed to seeing right they said this um international entity travelers worldwide reported that in January 2024 Trinidad and Tobago has a high crime rate including violent crimes like robbery and kidnapping. Despite these safety concerns, the country remains popular with tourists from both within and outside the region. Despite the high crime rate, visitors should choose to visit Trinidad <laughs> for Caribbean getaways. I guess it's like us here. You got your hot spots and so forth. But it's a comment on all who hold office to try to minimize those numbers as far as possible. So that's part of the reporting of travelers worldwide. Hunting robberies and kidnappings. You may want to watch that. You know. My wife told me the other day, some of her colleagues were in Panama. I'm about to see visit Trinidad and other places. But visit other places in Guyana as well. What are you doing in Panama? Oh, they, they saw, um, they follow a travel influencer. I can't explain all these things if you don't understand. This part. And one of the places recommended was Panama. And this travel influencer was telling you how you go about purchasing your ticket, where you can stay in Panama. And they just picked up. Julia, but during their vacation, save up the money for what, three years. Picked up and went to Panama on a little getaway. Dear folks, Latchman and others, let me become curious about life. You know, don't I worry the PPP whole day. Pay for 22 hours, but not all 24. I'd be curious about other aspects of life. Trinidad is a beautiful place, wonderful people. When you go to Trinidad, you touch them at PRP International. You see properness. I shame the VA food. We just got a facade. People fetching water in bucket to flush that a little bit. So uh, they're coming in the trailer to, to, to uh, TGI in the night looking for the lights, looking for the runway. Hopefully, nobody will check it out. The lights that is. You know? We got to stop just building buildings and, you know? Consider aesthetics. You're building a bridge. They build back the same harbor bridge in Borbis. I will probably build that bridge by the minute. Something. For the time. 
20 years later, 30 years later, we like the same thing. You know. We have to something to write home about. Like Naomi. Marilyn Thomas said, love we are too. Something to write home about. <laughs> something to write home about. You know. I've been stranded for many hours when I was coming back from Tobago recently. Everything right around you there. You got a nice lounge. Nice soft chairs. Starbucks over there. You got pizza over there. Chicken over some. But when you put people who know about that to build PR code, to build CGI, it's problems. Problems. The Trinidad folks said, according to travelers worldwide, that the crime is not affecting them. That's what they say. The crime is not affecting them. Apologies. The maths are not folks. That's what the folks are saying. The crime is not affecting them. The crime is not affecting them. But we're watching it, folks. <laughs> that's been, that's what it really said. Look, that's what it really said. I tend to believe that. You gotta do this manually. Why should we care if anybody has these things? Yeah. They can find good help these days. <laughs> Where are we going after this, folks? I got played by ear now. Seems I've lost, lost the graphic. So Trinity assets that, and from that now, we're coming frontally into the five minutes too. Do we have it back? Let me see how long they are. Yeah. So we're coming into the 519 folks. Welcome to our broadcast. If you haven't shared the live as well, do us that big favor. Share the live, smash that emoji button, folks. I think you have to. The only one to come in the 592. It's trouble. Trouble the capital Trump. Travel with a capital truck. <laughs> so we talked about adaptation of AI, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Mexico, and a little bit of attack with Ecuador. We talked about far, but what's happening regionally with the water situation, guys, in Jamaica. And then we just touched on what's happening in Trinidad and Jamaica. Now we're coming home, folks. With the 592. There's a lot happening home. It's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot happening once you come home. And they're telling us they said, there's a Turkish company. There's a Turkish company that's gonna be helping us with our power supply. I'm happy. Everybody has good power supply. But we keep wondering whether this whole for roll over power maybe man-made you know? yeah. look at all the sides the crisis so we could spend more money funnel more money to friends family and favorites earlier erwin roxanne that's one of the considerations we have yeah one of the considerations that we have <laughs> this this uh Turkish company car power ship that pronunciation they got car power ship it's one word car power ship K A R power ship <laughs> power ship this company it says is a the only company worldwide that supplies power uh, via this boat mechanism and they are aiming to supply emergency power of course amid the increased power shortages 
locally here in Guyana. But when the boys start talking, you really gotta you gotta wonder about them. You gotta wonder. They said here, funny, remember that big meeting, the big confab, right? That was red and all that. He was not right. That from here, from Jada and Trade in the Garrett. A team was created by uh, President Ali to monitor the situation. I want to move beyond monitoring. Move beyond monitoring and fix the problem. Because I think they've been monitoring for the last four years. Fix the problem. They said the power ship is the owner and operator of this uh, and, and builder, owner, operator, and builder of the world's only power ship fleet. And they expect it to arrive in Ghana two or three weeks from now. If this deal is signed, maybe it's already signed because when these guys tell you walk, you got to start galloping. If the deal is signed, the power ship, the, 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 the power ship fleet is expected between two and three weeks. Yeah. They don't leave a lot to be desired because they said they're claiming that this is a two-year, a two-year deal. It raises more question about the whale gas to show project. You know, it raises so 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 many more questions about that. And you know, the whale gas to show project is expected to add an additional three hundred megawatts to power the national grid. Yeah. It is delayed one time, then it's not delayed. I wish sure this make up the money. But the way it's got to show project is widely believed to be a next white elephant. Like the skeleton modernization project. And I keep asking, you all name one thing that you will be Andrew, the job you ever put your hand to that prosper. Name one thing. Banyan tree. Can we just call him Emperor Trumpet? You will be lying to change. Nothing is wrong with them. Banyan tree. So, even with the fact they had four years of making the state power company and with the gas the energy project and to them bringing back a mile of falls, we're still in crisis. All the money we have, we're still in crisis. That's leadership. I don't think so. I don't think that's leadership. Corruption ship, perhaps. But that can't be leadership. So you're watching that. The Turkish company and all. We're watching that. And as we were the gas to shore, you know, in yesterday's press conference coming out of the PNCR. I like the way that we are linked to the government concerning them joining up with Exxon. Right? Mind you, the government blaming Exxon for handing over um, the gas to show pipelines late. And a company suing the government thinks 11 million US a day for the contract being behind schedule. We're not suing anybody, but people are suing us. If my figures is correct, $11 million a day, the government of Ghana is being sued for delay of the gas short project. But we're not carrying any of our local contract to support. When all of these projects we see currently are delayed, Quite interesting yesterday at the PNCR press conference. Take a look at some of this. Thank you, Adam. Take a look. The decision to approach a Caribbean court of justice over an appeal court ruling on the parent company guarantee is being seen as a betrayal of the Guyanese people. It's the most unpatriotic government that we have ever seen in this country that we would want to uh, make Ghana more vulnerable to an oil spill. That uh, it is not that. The government is fighting the courts for additional protection, but fighting <laughs> to reduce the protection that we have for an oil spill. That was Elson Lowe, an economist. 
The previous Environmental Protection Agency had got the oil company to adjust the oil spill liability. The oil company had posted a two billion U.S. dollar guarantee. This was deemed inadequate. Some people took the matter to court and got a favorable decision. The oil company appealed. It was joined by the government. The appeal court ruled that the government through the attorney general couldn't be joined. This is now before the CCJ. So for the government now to be fighting against this to me is wholly absurd. Um, You know, but it is uh, really just a representation uh, uh, of the tragedies that we're seeing in terms of governance in this country and that we see repeatedly uh, from the BBB. Elson Lowe said that the courts are supposed to safeguard citizens' rights. PNCR Chairman Sharon Holder said that the situation is very disappointing. We're talking about the safety and well-being of all the enemies. And the court has made its decision based on the information in front of it, presented to it, right? And that decision is, in our view as an opposition, in the best interest of all Guyanese of all Guyanese. And so it is unbelievable that any government anywhere in the world would act in a manner that the PPP is acting now, in the form of challenging a decision that is in their best interest and the best interest of the people of this country. We have interesting times, folks. Interesting times. And as we unfold concerns, look at this one. They're telling us that the Caribbean Court of Justice has upheld the decision by the Court of Appeal locally here. That new driving owes GPL $13.7 million. Yeah. This is interesting for a lot of reasons. Sheila Boychan and Drew Loretta are that. It's interesting, Diane Abrams, uh, Andrew Griffith, Vashti, Magnot, Marlon Thomas, for a number of reasons. No, I don't know about you, but I got the meter. And if you don't put something in the meter, you know, when you hear it say, beep it, does it? Does it? What? What? When your bill is run up to 13.7 million, my bill would not even be allowed to run up to 0.7 million. Even if I had one of the old fashioned meters, we had to go in and pay. Prepaid. Or rather, postpaid. My bill would be cut out promptly. You know, them boys cutting your bill for $1,500. All manner of things. $3,000. You bill cut him for bill cut him for fifteen hundred dollars. You got pay four thousand to repeat the thing. What's the re- what's the reconnection fee? Select so um, you try to get a different meter system. You try to get a different meter system, and this is the difference between rich people and poor people in this country. This is the difference. Poor people bill and allowing to go past anything. When you meet and go past, think 15 something, whatever is the measurement. Here's that beeping. Peep, 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 peep. You can't call nobody with GPL and say, I can take it tomorrow. They have to keep in. <laughs> you better put some credit on that thing. So bill meetings, 13.7 million dollars. 13.7 million dollars. Roxanne, Sheila Boy check. Like we know the wrong set of people. Sheila Boy said he wanna know who else owe GPL. Who else owe GPL? That's a faulty meter. For you bill run up to 30 million a year, you ain't get caught yet. That's a fa- faulty, faulty. 
Meteorin system. Meteorin system. Faulty. Eh? So again, the CCJ held that the, that the, the tribe in the establishment, they were liable for this outstanding sum. And the sum um, was owed between 2002 and 2009, I think it was. Big, big, big money. 30. That's a lot of money, folks. And you ain't living, we ain't walking. $30 million is a lot of money. Please and thank you. We only run, said the people. It's quite, yeah, quite apparent. We know the wrong set of people. See? The wrong set. Look, let's be following. Yeah, we, we did talk about the gas energy project. The on again, off again project. On again, off again. They don't know. They said this project is going to be started next year. Next year, December. It's very interesting. But there's a giddy up to complete projects because how do they come back to the electorate and say, we were up? That's why yesterday, I think Evan Ali was out there. By this conversation, Road 3 project, they think a number of things. Of course, they took it back from one contractor. Took it back from one contractor. Right? Giving it to somebody else. It's interesting to see how the whole the whole thing is um is unfolding. You know? And all these things cost billions upon billions of dollars. You know, as we were on the gas yeah, shore project there, as we were on as we were on that, one of the things they would never tell you is that the gas yeah, shore was conceptualized by the new AFC. I saw in part of the reporting, they said that this was um, from scratch. The project was initiated from scratch to provide cheaper fuel source. They won't tell you that in the last couple of minutes. They won't tell you that part. And now, they've had a target over a billion US dollars. Not the dollars. Over a billion US now, we had this project at under half a million dollars. Half, half a billion dollars. Under half a billion US. It's about 400 million. But them boys, price that, gone up. And producing less and more expensive costs to the consumer, ultimately. And as I said, Extra, well, the government is always saying that the delay in the Exxon project is due to the late handover by the Exxon contractors responsible for laying the pipeline. That's what they tell us. Yeah. And again, if the project is not completed in time, government has to pay $11 million per month in liquidated damages to its contractor. $11 million. It's fascinating here again, fascinating here again. Now, we're really saying that Exxon delayed the animal over to us, but Exxon paid no penalty. And because we, in turn, laid with another contractor, we can be sued for 11 million a month. They're not self maxing to me. It's not maxing. And of course, this uh, gas so project involves laying a 200 um, km 12 inch diameter pipeline. Uh, to channel natural gas from Exxon's offshore operation uh, to this facility there at Wales, the, yeah, the natural gas liquids facility there at Wales. That's what they're doing. 200 km of a 12 inch diameter pipeline to channel the natural gas from offshore way out there to the natural gas liquids facility at Wales. And of course, in this year's budget, $80 billion was allocated to the project. $80 billion. Every year, we throw in money, but we ain't seen the returns yet. We're not seeing the returns. Right? And of course, it's the same kind of mentality that takes us to the conversation tree project. 
They run up there, they read the right attack. How much right attacks you got in this country? It's management by right attacks. Management by right attacks. Read the right attacks to GPL. Read the right attacks to contractor. Read the right attacks to manager practitioner. Read the right attacks to teachers. Management by right attacks. And so, April was out there yesterday and the conversation to Dennis Street Road Project with the bishop. I recommend the bishop clean his spiritual forces. Like he's seeing these things down the road coming. A good bishop, word it saw, would have been seeing these things. And we know that this conversation tree project has been split into two parts, the two, um, two lots. The first lot is executed by Dagmahan Construction and General Supplies. And the second is a Warrior Trinidad company, Calico. And this is the company that dismissed recently, Calico Guyana Inc. Very, very slothful. You have had some problems too. That's Jackman Construction and General Supply. They had their own challenges, but Calico apparently was too egregious. And now the telecast, they put together a team. The monitoring. Thank God. Monitoring. But what struck us as a little odd in this reporting here is that Ali urged immediate drainage and irrigation works on the incompleted portions of this project, the Calico aspect of it, to prevent flooding. So you tell me that um, the bishop and told all these times, he didn't see that and that, that can happen. Engineers been out there inspecting. They didn't see this drainage irrigation works have to be done. This country is real upside down, you know. This country is real, real, real upside down. So the people were slow to on the project and we now let it carry, carry the burden. We left to carry. <laughs> so I'm safe CD from flood, I can see it in Chronicle. I'm safe Joshua from flooding. Ordering drainage and irrigation works in the incomplete parts of the of this project here. This Dennis Dennis tree, the conversation tree. Dig the drains. Little back, little backward kind of business. Little backward power king. Who no no. Who know, know. One of the beautiful things I've seen recently, after much, after much chiding, the Judicial Service Commission was operationalized and has begun doing some work. And part of the reporting coming out of this exercise, part of this reporting, uh, Chief Justice Rocks and George Wiltshire Emphasize the role to these new magistrates and judges. Emphasize the role of impartiality. I, I really admire the way they're doing it. Bringing them into the system. Easing them into the system. To emphasize impartiality and dedication to justice. Not just making money. Right? Many new magistrates. We had a precept. She spoke to them about the dedication to justice and being impartial. And some comments attributed to the Chief Justice. Do you do not represent either side? Now I really wanted some explanation. Yes. You represent justice, clear as day. Is it either political side? You're representing the PVP, you're representing Abdul, AFC. You represent justice. Now, I, I know some of these folks here. I know them from uh, law school. I know some of these. They're, they're good folks. Serve us well. See, I took on politics. They kept down with the law. <laughs> Somebody got here with the jaguar here. 
this church crack was. You represent either side. And this exercise they've been having recently um, is to, they're part of an orientation program aimed to ensure judicial ethics, explain key aspects of the judicial function, and to assist, according to reporting, in a smooth transition from bar to bench, and to emphasize the importance of maintaining and updating the knowledge of the law. That's something that fascinated me to as a law student. It tells learning the last way you do when you finish getting your LLB. When you finish getting your bachelor in law, you're cramming like you know, to regard to change my exam. When you finish getting a degree, then it's when you go and learn the law. You do all the reading and so on, all the argumentation, and you refine your knowledge. They said, good law, you don't know all the law. A good lawyer know where to find it. <laughs> you know, where to find it. So congrats to these folks who are coming in. They said that um, key stakeholders as part of this orientation process for these new magistrates presented on topics such as judicial environment, the jury list, revision, sorry, the jury list, revision, managing the courtroom, adjudicating in civil cases, uh, ethical and procedural issues, bail, sentencing, domestic violence, and more issues as they um, they are oriented into the system. And some of these new magistrates, they include attorney at law, Abigail Gibbs, uh, Michelle Mathias, uh, Tariq Mohammed, Shivani, uh, Lala Ram, and Tamika Clark, Orangius um, Smith, Ravindra Mahabir, Omadak Chandran, among others. Um, Tuan Hardy was also named there. Yeah. Yeah. So congrats to them. And we expect nothing but good things out of them. So we found some good <laughs> really got and script the bottom bar but good 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 luck to all of our new magistrates coming into the system and we reported previously on the new um land title commissioners that we have land title judges we have a couple of them heading to burbies one heading to SEP. But congrats to all who coming into the judicial system this is how you build you build a country and instead you have to Beat the PP over the head to operationalize the Judicial Service Commission. You have to row with them day and night. Like you row with them to bring on board the, um, the what's the other one? The Petroleum Commission, you know, to operationalize some of the committees at Parliament that's still not meeting. Still not meeting. So the lot. A lot to get through, folks. Good luck to them with that. So thank you. Thank you. And best wishes to all our magistrates coming in. The new judges are coming in as well. You can only go down to the benefit. We got these everywhere. I think that's the time this morning. You got quite a few other things to get through. English is a second language. Our teachers were um, exposed to some training recently. Influx of all manner of people. So teachers from Region 1 and 4, Joshua inclusive in that, benefited from an English and Second Language training workshop recently. Kudos to our teachers, I said, don't give up. Let's fan, be curious about this business here. In. Happy to see them pursuing on that front. I see the Pharmacy Council also did some work recently. The board of the pharmacy comes has been appointed. Good. Good. People giving no wrong drugs in this place, you ain't got no recourse. So the pharmacy council board has been appointed, has been activated, operationalized. Good. Good. And then they're telling us too that the health ministry is going to be procuring a new dengue fever vaccines. That's what's good on the surface, but based on our experience with. All the vaccines and procurement and shady sheets, Dalmud al Maktoum and the others can't see a contract, can't see cost. So I like the fact that we're sucking up on dead people. Something going around, there's a flu, a bug in the air, something, a number of things, including the PPP. Number of things affecting Guyanese, including the PPP. 
So it's good to see my ship have going in this direction. But we can drill down some more and see what we come up with. Drill down some more. Frank, we drill enough. Believe it or not, Frank. Drilling. We can be drilling down some more. Right? And then they tell us, uh, grandmother who was missing since Easter was found in a drain alive. Thanks be to God for that. Thanks be to God for that. Found the light. You know, bit of good news there. This is a Baron Bruce. They thought they lost her. I could imagine. She's from Diamond on the East Bank. I was found alive on April 3rd in a drain in Greater Georgetown. Right? They said that. She was with her brother initially, uh, 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 her brother Rudolf Rapid, who had left her in his car near the Ghana Defense Force base at Ayangana. Right? And then he discovered that she was missing. Discovered that she was missing. And then she was found in a mud covered drain of Lillian Dahl. And we could spend some time here, you know, talking about when our parents get older and parents age, you know, different time of life, different season of life. And you got to be so careful. Got to be so careful. My grandmother is well advanced in age. And she's in that time of life. Some days she's fluid, fluid in her memory and then some other days. Don't even know who she's talking to. So I understand this situation personally, this family is going through. You know, personally, this family is going through. My grandfather died in 2012. And once he died, there was a stamp on a letter. Did everything together. And once he transitioned, her entire Mental health and all of it just went down. Just went down like that. You know. So I understand that and happy, very happy that Barry was found. Very happy that Barry was found. Very happy. So that's a good note for us. Because after this is some fire issues, you know, fire the Kendra and Mycone. Man feel like neighbor, fellow visit, uh, fellow vid, fellow village, villager. He had a confrontation with. Destroyed his home. All manner of things people dealing with. Sheikh Satan from the Kendrin Maikoni. Entire house was raised to the ground. He has a villager. The man threatened him, burned down your house. A day later, seems to have made real on those promises. So the number of things we're following, folks, a number, a number of things. And you now coming out of that PNCR press conference too yesterday, they told us that government, this PP government, blocking a lot of investigation, a lot of inquiries. They say they're transparent. They say they're for good governance and for accountability, but yet blocking a number of inquiries. Take a look. There's a parliamentary sectoral committee on economic services. Its function is to seek answers to problems in the mining and energy sectors. This committee has had 14 sittings since its existence in 2020. Chairman of the People's National Congress Reform, Shawin Holder, has said that the blackout situation is of urgent public importance. There was a unanimous agreement to have those in government with, with the responsibility of policy and administration of GPL appear before the committee so that the issue can be properly interrogated with a view of arriving at solutions to bring this crisis to an end. Opposition members also pressed the Minister of Public Works for answers on several other matters, including one, stalled major construction projects, two, continuous expenditure, expenditure on the Chedi Jagan International Airport expansion project, three, expenditure on river transportation, 
Four, status of major infrastructure projects. And five, contract monitoring units. This is the only active sectoral committee. It's shared by the opposition that is in the minority. Older said that its work continues to be stymied by the government and the Speaker of the National Assembly. The committee had set out a clear work program, which entails field visits to certain economic projects, including the recently commissioned Rose Hall and Skeldon Estates, the Black Belly Sheep and Brackish Freshwater Shrimp Projects. This work program was first rejected by the government, by the government members of the committee. A proposal for funding has been denied by the Speaker of the National Assembly. One of the main issues is the Gas to Shore Energy Project. This project has cost overruns to the extent that the contractors are seeking arbitration. Economist Elson Lowe addressed the issue. This dispute escalated to the point of arbitration, with the government not saying one word to the Guyanese people. It illustrates the typical PDP disdain and arrogance. We must now worry and ask, what else is being hidden about this project? Given the country's dependence on this project for its energy security, we share the public's alarm at the prospect of yet another super expensive Jagdeo apocalypse. We cannot afford for the gas energy plant to go the way of Skeldon, with a sharp increase of in costs, which we've already seen. The decision to move the project to Wales West Bank Demerara has already added an additional cost to the project. This cost is about 100 million US dollars. Well, the pipeline seems to be on track. It should be completed by the end of the year. Uh, but really, it is that uh, we, first of all, I got the confirmation, uh, I think from the head of the project, that there's going to be at least a six month delay to the gas energy project, which puts it in the fourth quarter of 2025. Um, we'll see whether that whether the gas energy project, uh, really it's most likely that it will come after the next election. The present quest for arbitration could delay the project even further. Is that you've seen um, this project, which originally was being talked about it being a few hundred million dollars, uh, balloon in cost to uh, uh, just, uh, well, this arbitration would put it, I think, above 2 billion US. Um, that is quite a significant, this $90 million cost of run is quite significant. That dispute must have been boiling along for some time for it to get all the way to arbitration. The government has been silent on that. They are not even um, allowing the parliamentary committees, which would have some level of oversight. Um, on the sector, like the Natural Resource Committee, that is not functioning. Um, I have requested that the oil and gas sector, from an economic standpoint, also fall under the Economic Services Committee. And um, they have basically gone silent on it and uh, essentially not allowed it to come under the scrutiny of the Economic Services Committee. <laughs> So let's leave it there, folks. It's a lot. It's a lot happening. It's a lot happening. And we even talk as yet about that. Um, what do you call it? Fraud happening at the Martikai uh, NDC. You know, money spared to SIP workers, community enhancement uh, workers there. Um, fake, fake money. You know, fake $5,000 bill, counterfeit $5,000 bill being paid. A lot of corruption. That's what took us. Allegations of corruption, as you know by now, took us into um, some of those places. Took us to Kapui last week. Allegations of corruption. Martikai NDC saying you got counterfeit money being paid on by the NDC. You know. <laughs> so, so much, folks. That's going to do it for us at the set. Stay safe. Rasiman, Esther, thanks for being here. Neon, Wenda, Irvin Don, Gwyneth, Diane, Brian, all the other folks. Thanks for coming by this morning. Smash that emoji button before you go, folks. Share the live as well. We're going to see you guys on the next one. Brian Daniels, Patterson Williams, learning. <laughs> good, is, good to have the business on the live this morning. <laughs> Michelle, Andrew, Osmond, Brenda. Uh, have a good day, folks. And stay back. Stay back.